Well, hi there, food friends. It's Kevin. Hey, I'm Ralph. I'm the happy helper behind the camera. And welcome to Cavalcade of Food. And today, Ralph, we are looking at a vintage appliance. Part of the collection, yeah. Yes. A Sunkist commercial juicer. I bet there's a story behind that. There is a story behind it. So, you know, let's just say put something out up front. And Ralph, you know this to be true, as does anybody who is a kind of a serious collector of anything, whatever it might be. One of the best parts of collecting things are the people that you meet in the process of celebrating your collection and collecting. You know, Ralph, you think of the people you met through collecting records, right? Yeah, people who share that passion who and share, interest. Yes, and how much you learn from them and just the wonderful people. Trading well, info is fun. Yes, and, and uh, believe it or not, there's a network of people who collect vintage appliances of all sorts. And I had the great uh, occasion to meet um, a group of electric fan collectors earlier this year. Um, and they so were fans of yours. They were. And so Todd, Ray, and Steve. And so anyways, and it was just wonderful to connect with people who have these shared passions and even though they don't collect necessarily kind of kitchen appliances, they electric fans are cool, and I have a few, um, but these guys are serious collectors. Well, anyways, Steve uh, was bidding on a fan in an auction, and he had to bid on a whole lot, you know, where you like, there's all kinds of items in the lot, mm -hmm. and one of them was this fan that he was interested in. Anyways, he got the fan, I'm happy to say, but in the lot was this juicer. And I'm sorry, I don't have the before picture to show you, but this juicer was... Um, in need of some CLC. Oh my gosh, big time. It was, um, originally the base was chrome, and uh, the chrome had gotten discolored and pitted and whatever and someone painted it silver anyways so steve said uh i would like to donate this to the cavalcade collection but only after i do try a little restoration work on it well baby look at it now steve he it did is that? yes wow the uh, he rebuilt the, he took this thing apart he rebuilt the whole shebang. Cleaned it from top and to bottom. If, I don't know if the scale, like if you can see how big this thing is. So this is not a machine that was meant for the home. This was meant for a restaurant or a hotel, okay? Um, I've done some research on this, and this thing puts out. Don't give yourself a hernia. It, it weighs about 35 pounds. Uh, this thing puts out. Um, 10 or no 12 to 15 gallons of orange juice an hour <laughs> yeah that's if, definitely if, if you want great if you want to you know do that much I that's thought, how much it would anyways okay. this thing was meant for high volume use I just love how it sparkles after um, his, uh, I mean would you restoration. look at this and he so again this was chrome so he couldn't bring the chrome back so he painted it white this beautiful enamel. I don't know if you can get a close-up of the badge here, Ralph. It says, California Fruit Growers Exchange, Los Angeles, Sunkist. I don't know who made the motor for this. I've been doing research. All my research says that Sunkist made this. And I, I, I don't know if the growers had a little factory somewhere where they actually built these juicers, but it was in their best interest to get places, people in places to drink orange juice um, because growing oranges uh, was their business. So um, 
but they still actually make this unit today. It's it, the top part is all plastic, so it's not it's, it's not like this. Uh, it's not the Goliath that this thing is, but they still make this juicer today. It's still called Sunkist, and you can buy it through restaurant supply companies. Um, now, I did a, we did a, um, a, a video some time ago on juicers. Do you remember, Ralph? I think so, yeah. And um, anyways, one, I didn't have this at the time, and two... This is a whole. This is a juicer on a whole other level. So I want to take this apart and show our food friends the parts of this. So let me, and then I'll put it back together and sort of. So here is the base right here. You can see, okay. And like I said, this thing it is heavy. Um, and then so here. Here is where you have sort of the, um, I'm not sure what they call this, but this is where the juice is actually collected and it fits into the base like this with your spout coming down. Now the next thing that goes on is this is a strainer because you know what oranges has uh, and lemons and grapefruit, it's seeds right. and pulp and stuff like that. So this is designed to catch all that and let the juice flow on through. And it's got a little kind of a, uh, a locking mechanism here. So when you put it on the motor, the shaft of the motor. You won't have any drops, strainer danger. It, <laughs> exactly, you drop it down and you press that in place. And then this is called the reamer. So this is the part that you actually put the fruit over and it, you know, it kind of pulverizes. It's got these. You mean you put over the fruit? Yeah, you put the fruit over. Oh, it. you put the fruit over that. Yes, oh, okay. exactly. Are you going to demonstrate? I, I see you have some oranges over there. And then, and then this is just the shield, um, which helps from the juice splattering, ah, you know, yes. all over the place and making a big mess. And that just kind of snaps on, snaps into. Hold on. There we go. That locks in there. Okay. So, so when, when it's um, all together and you're able to use it for, is there anything else you can use it for? Like, does it pop popcorn? And no. It only does one <laughs> thing. It does not pop popcorn. It does not make pancakes. Okay. But this I mean, is a juicer. I know. But is it really? Um, and it's a citrus juicer. I, I was going to say, is it only oranges or can you do no, anything? No. If you had apples, you're out of luck. You're going to have to use a different machine. Oh, this, okay. This, this is an orange juicer. This, this was made by, and by the way, on the, it even says, I'm going to take this back off. Here, I don't know if that you can make it out. It says, sun, it's engraved, sun-kissed. Mm -hmm. So this was meant, and of course we see sun kissed all over the place even to this day. This was meant for juicing citrus, oranges, grapefruits, Lemonade. lemons, limes. Okay. Okay. That's what this was meant for. And Ralph, let me ask you a question. When is an orange not orange? When it gets moldy and it turns green? No, but when it's when it's an orange is not orange when it's an orange you mean when it's uh, a juicing orange this is a juicing orange it's still orange but just it's, more green well, it's kind of goldish green oh, okay I see. this yeah. isn't these bright beautiful orange oranges that we see in the supermarket are those fake um i don't know they breed them somehow to be such bright so bright, vibrant they may spray something not coloring, but they may spray like a mm. wax. Or something. But this is the, the, where they when they grow oranges that are explicitly for juicing. This is what they look like. They're not pretty, but they don't have to be because we're we're not selling them for their looks, and we're not selling them even for their their flesh, the inside. We're selling them for the juice, and so. This is a juicing orange, and you used to be able to buy these everywhere because a lot of people squeeze their own juice at home every day. Well, you should have something nearby that those old-fashioned, like, handled um, juices where you would just 
Oh, yeah, I showed those on our right. it, on the juicing episode. If you episode. look at the juicer episode, yes, the, but, the, 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 the the juicer that, that has like the guillotine that comes down and squeezes the No, juice. The, I'm talking about the kind that's just like a like a greenish translucent cup. Oh, yeah, the glass, glass juicer. Yeah, yes. everybody had those. My point is just yeah. that when you were saying that these were more common and you could find them more places because back in the day uh people every kitchen had one of those hand squeezing yes, juicer machines because or, that's how you got orange juice yeah um and again that was for a home for restaurants and hotels and things like that that were going through gallons and gallons of orange juice a day they needed a heavy duty thing like right this. and another thing we used to that we've talked about often is how the size of juice glasses back then shows you that juice, you know, you could have a little one of those little green glass juicers because a glass of juice was a pretty small thing. A glass of tomato juice, a glass of anything. Because yes. we didn't have those supersized tons of Big sugar, gulp, gigantic. Giant, no, we didn't. Our portions were much smaller, Ralph. You're right about we that. We ate healthier. We drank healthier. I also want to tell our friends that whenever you are juicing anything like a lemon or an orange or lime or whatever it might be, don't juice fruit when it's cold. Ah, good tip. Okay? It will release more of its juices at room temperature. So if you keep, um, if you keep fruit in the refrigerator and you're gonna, you plan on juicing it, bring it out and let it come up to room temperature before you juice it. You'll get more juice. Okay, so okay. have these been sitting out for a while? Yes, these have. And I'm gonna slice this. Again, not really very, I don't know how the yeah, camera can pick it up. It's not super orangey. Not super orangey. I mean, it could almost pass for a grapefruit or a lemon. Um, now I have a grapefruit here and we're gonna juice those too. Now that's beautiful, mm -hmm. right? Okay. So that's our grapefruit, but our juicing oranges are, yeah, they're not really bright orange, they're, but they're, that's not what they're intended to be. So I'm going to use this under the spout. I bet you a lot of our food friends had something like this growing up. I know I did. A little orange juice decanter. Brings back memories. And the... Ralph, you made the point about how what the size of a juice glass Wow, that's even smaller than I remember. Okay, yeah, here's a juice glass, okay? That's exactly what this is. Um, and in the, for the 1970s, this was a serving of juice. Yeah, it almost looks mm, bigger than it really is. Put it over here so for size comparison. Yeah. Yeah. I mean... And here, uh, you can see how... how the it's monster small. size of this yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, juicer. <laughs> Steve, small. I can't tell you that just how tickled I was about this. Okay, so we're going to turn it on. Oh, here, let me take the lid off I, and, and just turn it on so people can see what happens. Okay, wow. it's actually fairly quiet. It is. Uh, I'm going to shut it off and then we're going to put this on so that we will use it as intended. There we go. All right. So, are you ready? Here we I'm go. I'm ready. Oh, look at it coming out. Wow, that's awesome. Oh, the smell. Yes. Isn't this, you know what it smells like? Orange Julius. I was going to say. Remember that? Yeah. Look at that baby dog. What does it do to the seeds? Well, the seeds are staying oh, in, the right, in the strainer. Oh, that's right. Yeah, here, I'm going to juice this one last half. Now, if you try juicing like a navel orange, one of those bright oranges, yeah. you wouldn't get this much juice out of it. Oh. Okay? Because these juices, these oranges are made more made for, juice. for juicing. Not all that. So, so it's still coming out here. 
So let me take the lid off so you can kind of see. What's Look. left inside? Okay. okay, so there's our seeds, our pulp, um, all inside. So this is just two oranges. Um, yeah, right? Two oranges so Two far? oranges. That's the juice of two juicing oranges. Okay. And let me do a little switch here. All right. You look like a mad scientist. So, Steve, to you, thank you. To your health. And orange juice is healthy, lots of vitamin C. God, that's good. that is so good. Oh. You know, this is why when you, you get orange juice in the, in the jug or in the frozen concentrated stuff, you know, it can't compare to this. It's the real deal. Yeah. So, um, we're going to give our cameraman here a glass of that orange juice. Ooh. And that tastes so fresh is, and yeah. orangey. And that was the whole idea. So, um, you know what I want to do next, Ralph? Put some vodka in it. <laughs> Make it a, a classic screwdriver. Well, I'll tell you what, it would be a delicious one. I should probably rinse this out first. Um, Before you do the... Uh, but I, I want to... Let me get a glass. I really want to um, uh, do the grapefruit. And see how it goes. Okay. All right, so do you uh, no. want to clean it out? No. Nope. Come on, we'll do it like this. I'm just curious how much juice we'll get out of this one grapefruit. It looks like a lot. Wow. <laughs> Chilling it up already. And I'll tell you, this is, it's, it's quiet, but boy, is this powerful. How do you know when you're at the end? It just well, kind of just, feels yeah. like you can tell, you know, because you can feel the um, the kind of the reamer against the inside of the, the fruit. Right. So now look at that. Now that isn't beautiful. That's a healthy size uh, glass of grapefruit juice. Oh my gosh. So good. So good. Let me try. And what a great color. I know, isn't it? It's beautiful. Yeah, and if you know, if you wanted to do the cocktail route, it's not as sweet as the orange juice, but what a great flavor it has. Yeah, actually you could mix it with the orange um, juice. So if you wanted to do, you know, a screwdriver or mimosa, something like that, how good would it be with fresh squeezed orange juice? Delicious. Yeah, pretty awesome. So here's the, here's what we got, Ralph, on the inside. Um, so... You know, a little bit of orange pulp, but did a great job. So, Steve, I told you when you dropped this off, you, I said, I, you know I'm going to try it because I just got to. Got so. a little pulp friction in there. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Ralph. Um, so, anyways, that was a little demonstration of the Sunkist commercial juicer vintage I want to say circa 1955 or so from what I've been able to research so far if any of you have any like detailed information about this juicer um, I would love to know about it I really would um, mm. or if you ever worked in a restaurant or a hotel and used a juicer like yeah. this Share your stories. We yeah. love hearing from you. We love when our food friends interact and share stories. And look at it, it's still dripping. I know. So, you know, anyways, it's, again, this is, you know, you meet people um, and the things that, that uh, you come across is just uh, such a wonderful part of being a collector. 
uh, is the connections that you make with others, including all of our food friends out there, Ralph. Yeah, we appreciate you all so much. And gosh, what a wonderful job your friend did on cleaning It's beautiful, the restoration it. work. I think because this is a citrus juicer and there's acid in citrus, right? Uh, and I think that that probably reacts. I can see oh, how this got pitted or the sure. chrome got, you know, um, messed up over time, especially if it had a lot of heavy use. But boy, it's looking beautiful now. We're going to keep it that way. So thank you again, Steve. Um, so appreciated. Uh, we'll say thank you to our food friends for watching. Don't forget about the website. You know the address, Ralph? Cavalcadeoffood.com. That is it. Uh, please give the video a like. And if you're so inclined, subscribe if you're not a subscriber so that you can be notified of every time a new video goes up. And tell your friends and family about uh, these little trips down memory lane and our little time machine called Cavalcade of Food. And um, get your vitamin C, everybody, this winter. Stay healthy. Vitamin C, you later. <laughs> Thanks for working the camera, Ralph. And the bad jokes. Okay, see you next time. Okay, bye, bye everybody. everybody. Stay healthy.